Welcome to another RDWorks Learning Lab. This small beam is turning out to be quite a serious but interesting problem to me and a few other people as well who can't understand why I'm still concentrating on this very small beam. Well the answer really is it's beginning to confirm something that I came across about three years ago when I started to disbelieve in some of the things that I was told about lens theory and laser beams. The stuff just didn't seem to work together. What I'm finding and what I was told I would find are not the same. As I've mentioned to you several times before, I'm convinced that lens theory is 120% correct for what it was designed for which is projecting images, dealing with light, uniform, roughly uniform intensity light, as you would get if you tried to put light through a lens for projecting as a camera, for a telescope, those sorts of things. They're not dealing with light energy, they're dealing with light rays. And we've got a different sort of animal here. We're talking about a non-uniform set of light intensities in other words, every single ray is a different intensity. That's not the idea behind lens theory. I'm an ignorant person when it comes to optics, but that means I don't have any technical baggage to drag me down. I'm like an innocent child. I can explore and do what I damn well like. I might get my fingers burnt, but hey, that's all part of learning. I'm going to continue with this small beam thing because I think there's something really strange going on. Now I've mentioned quite a few times this so-called dead spot in the middle of a lens and that's probably annoyed quite a few people but I'm hopefully going to explore that issue further today because I thought I was on the edge of some interesting discoveries the last time. I think we'll do a few more experiments and find that things are not quite what I thought they might be. I will just point out, before I start looking at these, I will just point out to you that there's a hell of a wind outside today. I don't think the roof of this workshop is going to blow off, but you might hear some funny noises. It is a fairly strong wind, which is unusual for this time of the year. Now, what we've got here is a mode burn that I did on this machine, which is the 70 watt machine, after the third mirror. And this is the same mode burn done on the RF machine, on the table after the third mirror. Now this one is 70 watts and this one is 30 watts. This is 30 watts right at the middle of the table where I've got my thinnest possible highest intensity beam. So I think you can see that the maximum damage has been done down the center of this material and we've got a very sharp pointed piece of damage here. So we must have had a maximum amount of light intensity right at the center of the beam for it to be able to push its way down like that. Now we've got the same thing here, maximum intensity at the center of the beam. But the problem is, this one took 10 seconds to reach 25 millimeters deep. This one took only about 4 seconds or 5 seconds to reach the same depth. So the intensity here is much higher than the intensity in these, even though this is only a 30 watt beam and this is a 70 watt beam. Now, as I tried to explain to you the last time, the intensity is really dependent upon the diameter of the beam. So if you get a large diameter beam, which is 70 watts, its intensity will be less because it's a larger diameter beam. As we squash the beam diameter down, so we increase the intensity. Well, this is an intensity of 30 watts in a very small beam, and it's able to outstrip the penetrating performance of a 70 watt beam. So here's what that same beam, as I said, looks like at the center of the table. They're one and the same thing, these two pictures. But here is the same beam, the same beam, at the corner of the table where the beam has now opened up in diameter. This is the difference between the beam at the center of the machine and the beam at the back corner of the machine. The beam has increased in size. There's exactly the same wattage being put into that beam, but it's being put into it in a different way. And so consequently, its ability to do damage is less. 
because the overall intensity distribution within that beam is different to the overall intensity distribution in that beam. The reason I'm explaining this and why we're coming back onto this machine is because the one thing that's missing in this saga between these two machines is what happens when I reduce the power. Now on the RF machine, this beam here will never change shape. It gets truncated by virtue of the PWM. This one, which is on the glass tube machine, you can change the shape of the beam. I don't have enough room on this block to do my test. So we're going to do one just here so we can compare what the same 10 seconds of burn looks like with 30 watts worth of power from this machine. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Coming back to this well-worn and favourite picture of mine, which clearly describes what we've just seen. Look, we've got a constant diameter beam, which when we give it full beans, 70 watts, we produce quite a nice, sharp, intense picture. So now we've decreased the power from, say, 70 watts down to 30 watts. Look, we've completely removed this very, very sharp point, and it's now a bit of a a rounded point, it's still got the same basic Gaussian form, but it's a completely different shape beam. It hasn't got the same intensity profile in this pattern here as it had in this pattern. So this one had a lot of power and it was able to grow to the full beam diameter almost. Whereas this one, if we start looking here to three, we haven't got as much power here. So we're going to get a slightly smaller beam and we're going to get a lot less intensity damage. With this glass tube beam, you have got control of the shape of the beam as you change power. That's a privilege that you do not get with an RF tube. An RF tube is always the same shape beam. So now you've seen what a 30 watt comparison looks like to this one with a large beam. Again, the principle is very simple. The smaller the beam, the greater the intensity we can squash into that beam. Look at the size of that beam for 30 watts. Look at the size of that beam for 30 watts. There is no comparison. That if I can put this very sharp beam through a lens and do the same with the lens that you do with this beam, I've got a cutting monster. The beam tells me it's got fantastic properties of intensity, but the problem is lenses. Lenses are not doing what you would normally expect them to do, which is to focus the light down and make it more intense. With this 7.5 inch meniscus lens on this RF machine, in the last session, at the centre of the machine, I was able to produce this mode burn effectively. This took somewhere in the region of about 4 seconds to burn through here without the lens in. But with this 7.5 inch lens in, I got these rather strange results here. Now these very strange results here, this is a 7.5 inch lens, but I was getting these results at something like about 50, 60 millimeter focal distance from the lens in the center of the machine. So in the back corner of the machine, when I used the same lens, I got these results. And these were done at round about 130 millimetre focal distance. And this was where I saw a glimmer of hope. As I made the beam bigger at the back corner, I was getting deeper cuts. Wow! I'm on my way to success. Just before I set this camera up, I quickly recreated these conditions to make sure that I had replica replicatable data. Great, I thought. That should easily cut through 3 millimetre. HDF. Look at the rubbish result that I got. And that set me thinking again. There's something not right. Something that I'm not taking into account. Something that lenses are not doing. Because on the one hand, the penetration results say I should get good cutting. But, 
The problem with acrylic is it's a very difficult material to cut. It's very slow. Normal wood cuts twice, sometimes three times faster than acrylic. So this is a difficult material to heat up. And it doesn't show on the surface here the road damage that's happening. We're going to go back and look at some of the work and some of the initial conclusions that I reached maybe four or five sessions ago. So that's 25.6, more or less 25.4, the focal distance of the lens. So I'm afraid we're going to have to turn the machine on and make a bit of a noise now. And now I'm going to use a 500 millisecond pulse. This is a 10.5 up inside here. And so I've got 18 here, so that's 28.5 pulse. So I think as you can see, as we catch these in the light, how big the collateral damage is. We've got a cone around the outside of the central high intensity spot. And as we get towards the focal point, The spot is getting smaller, and so is the, if you like, the damage area around the outside. So we're getting closer to what I would class as a focal point. I mean, that's as small as it gets. So we never get all the power passing through that small central spot. And then it starts to get bigger. That one inch lens appears to be able to focus it doesn't focus particularly well because if we take a look down here the spot in the middle the high intensity spot in the middle is 0.1 but round the outside we've got 0.9 of energy which is not really being focused well I suppose it is being focused it's been focused down to 0.9 that's nothing like the focal spot size that they promised for this lens now, the reason why I've given it 500 milliseconds is because that's given enough time for probably nearly all of the beam to pass through that central focal point. It hasn't. The smallest we can find is 0.9 and I suspect that if I left it longer it may even go out to 1.2, 1.3 even. So at least we can see that that beam is being focused by a short focus lens. So while I was here, I tested the same lens in both orientations. The difference between the orientation focal point was two millimeters for such a short focal length lens. The powerful spot in the middle was 0.1 and 0.2, and the scorch around the outside was 0.9 and 1.0. This is the 190 millimeter lens, and we're starting off with it at the focal point of 190 millimeters. Okay, so now we've flipped the lens over, and we've got 190 with the flat side down. And this is at 290 millimeters. Okay, I'll push on and I'll show you the result in a minute. This is a 190 millimeter focal length lens. Look, there is a difference, but there's certainly no focal point that you could isolate there and say, well, yeah, that must be the focal point. Let me turn these over. Now this one's a bit confusing, but this one's a bit clearer. You'll see these black dots that I've got on here. These black dots indicate that the beam has come through the thickness of the material. This one's come through at 180, and this one has actually come through at 170. So, 20 millimeters above the focal point, all the way up to where I stopped, there's power breaking through the center. It's not below the focal point, it's above the focal point. And just for reference, I've taken the lens out completely. There's no lens in there, and here's what the beam looks like. So uh, there's an obvious difference here on the one inch lens because there's the reference beam. 
and there's what it's been focused to. But on the 190 millimeter, looks as though it's done nothing at all. In fact, if anything, at 290, it's made it bigger. So we're not focusing at all with that long focus lens. Right now it's quiet. Let's uh, let's go back and discuss what these results might mean because. I postulated this theory four or five sessions ago. The fact that lenses were not doing what most people thought they should be doing, which is to amplify um, what passes through them. I said at the time, to great derision, I have to say from quite a few sources, that there was a so-called, what I call, dead spot through the centre of a lens where not much was happening. Now, that's only true if you put a very narrow, high intensity beam right through the center of a lens here. Now you can see the maximum power and the maximum intensity in that lens there is very, very narrow. It's a narrow beam to start with and it's got an incredibly high intensity. And the intensity spike is very close to the axis of the lens. Now what I've drawn here is an enlarged version of these two lenses that we've been using. This is a one and a half inch lens with a very small spherical radius, i.e. it's got a lot of curvature to it. This is a 190 focal length lens and it's got very little curvature to it. If I enlarge what's going on at the center just here and here, this is how I imagined then and basically it seems to have confirmed it now but with a very short focus length lens there is a very small section at the center of the lens which is basically flat and if it's flat it does no refraction and if you combine that no refraction area just there with the very very high spike of power that is passing through that particular area then nothing is going to happen i've drawn that as a parallel line that's what this data shows almost although we've got a very small spot on here and it is focusable and there we are, look, we are focusing some of this outside energy and it's gradually getting smaller and smaller. But the spot that's on every one of these is pretty constant, the power spot right through the centre. And that spot is somewhere in the region of 0.1 or 0.2. Even when I turn the lens over, it's still 0.1 or 0.2. It only seems to confirm this theory. The reason why you start to realise that this might not be such a silly idea after all is when you go to the other extreme of a 190 millimetre focal length lens and you start looking at this data here that's what the raw beam does in 500 milliseconds it's, it's virtually the same as all of these so we've got this very very high spike of intensity which is virtually all residing inside this flattish zone where there is zero or almost zero refraction and so consequently we're getting this wide beam right through the center which is the raw beam which is just escaping through the center of the lens and nothing is happening you can see the gaussian spike of energy in the center of each one of these and as i said to you before it's really strange that only when we're above the focal point, do we get enough penetration to work our way through three millimeters of material? So we've got no noticeable focus with this lens at the moment with this very, very small beam. If I can change the diameter of my beam to do that, then I probably should start to see some, I wouldn't say a lot, but some focus coming back into this beam because we're getting more of this energy here which becomes focusable. We should still get this fairly wide spike of power through the middle I would expect but that's the only way that I can verify whether or not this theory is right. Now we have the ability on this machine to move this to the back corner of the machine if you remember and that's where the beam is probably nearly twice as large. You'll see I've got a very, very sophisticated focal length measuring, measuring system here. Yeah, I, I know it is, um, to say the least, um, a little bit um, Heath Robinson. But it will do the job to within a millimetre or two. And that's all we need 
for a 190mm focal length lens. We're going to run from 90, which is where we are at the moment, to 190, which is here, up to 290. It's the same range that we had on here. Now, that's the supposed focal point there, 190. I'm really a little bit lost for words because, I mean, it categorically shows what I predicted it would show, and that is that when we make the beam bigger, and look, we have made the reference beam bigger, here it is before at the centre of the table, and here it is now nearly twice the size, and when it's twice the size, look, we've got some focus coming back into the situation. It's not perfect focus by any means, because look, here, here we are, we've got the focus at 150, not 190, as we expected. It gets slightly smaller, and then it remains virtually stable all the way from 210, down to 90 and we get the similar thing here look 250 it the remains stable then from around about 190 all the way down to 70 you expect a lens to focus and it focuses if you've got a wide enough beam but if you don't have a wide enough beam you fall into this trap of running through the dead spot as I will keep aggravating people and saying at the center of the lens we should be able to see what that looks like when we punch it into a piece of acrylic. Let's look what our 500 millisecond burn does in the rear corner. So let's compare that with the focal point burn on MDF. And there's our difference. Although it gives us a 3D image, it doesn't tell us the whole story because this is much more difficult to burn away than this. So this is scorching much easier than this. This shows a 1.9 millimeter beam after 500 milliseconds, and this shows a 2.4 millimeter beam. If what we've seen so far is true, then we should assume that when I put these lens back in and test it at the back corner of the machine with a bigger beam, I should get an even better focus because I've got less of this high spike going through this this sort of dead zone at the center of the beam and I've got more of it of out here being able to be focused and we're doing this in one millimeter steps remember not 20 millimeter steps at the center of the machine it's pretty good for both of them and at the back of the machine just for comparison we've got this one and this one there's less variation in this than there is when we've got a bigger beam passing through it. So the bigger the beam passing right through the center of the lens, the more the focal point appears. So the beam size categorically affects the focus, as I proposed in my diagrams. Okay, now I'm gonna do something we experimented with before, but we're going to do it with this very long focus lens where we know that we've got virtually no focus taking place through the center of the lens because it's got this flat spot on the top where all this very thin beam is passing through and very little of it is happening out here. Now the only time we got it to happen a little bit out here was when we made the beam bigger by putting this to the back of the machine. If we look at the way in which a lens works it picks up all the light from everywhere across the lens and it tends and wants it wants to refract it and, and take it into a common focal point down here except when we've got this very strange situation here so what we're going to do we're going to move that green line to here now like that so now these beams that are coming down here whether they be intense or not intense they're all going to be treated as rays that are coming in from an outside point and they will all tend to focus down to this point here. We should be able to prove my point exactly that if we move off centre we should get a significant difference in the performance of this beam by running off centre and at the moment I'm off centre by about probably four or five millimetres. Now it's much easier to see all these results uh, when they're all laid together. These are all 190 millimetre results. These two are at the back of the machine and these three are at the center of the machine. This one we can really discount because it's similar to this one 
same reference okay but this one was done with the lens up the wrong way as you can see there's virtually no difference whether I have the lens this way or that way okay when they're at the center of the machine with the smallest beam passing through the longest focal length lens so let's keep these together because these are the comparisons that we want to look at now the proposal was that if I move the center of the beam to the side of the lens then I would get a focus because I wasn't getting a focus through the center yeah we've got a gradual decrease in size there isn't really anywhere there that you could say oh that's yes, a focal point there's 190 which is supposedly the focal point but there's nothing there to distinguish that from anything else and here we've got 190 which is the focal point we've got nothing there that really distinguishes it from anything else we've definitely got a smaller beam but it's a consistently smaller beam which is puzzling because we're talking about look from 50 to 290 that's 240 millimeter range over which there's virtually no change in the burning ability of this lens yes it's changed in size so it must have focused hey we've got no focusing ability at the back of the machine where we've got a bigger beam we definitely got some sort of a focus change because look we've got a big spot here and we've got uh, around about 150 here we've got what looks like the smallest spot but that smallest spot is still just about the same size as these but a lot darker we'll come back to that in a minute when we look at this one where we put the offset on it we would expect to see a focus I'm, 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 I'm a little bit dubious to say that we have got a focus but look we're starting off here very large and we're definitely getting smaller and smaller and smaller until we get to about 130 and then we start to get a little bit bigger again so we've definitely got with a bigger beam and an offset we've definitely got the hint of some focus taking place in the same way that when we're at the center of the lens with a big beam we definitely got a hint of some focus taking place so again we've got this smaller beam because we've focused the beam better you can't see it but when I look at these and these they're nothing like as powerful as these and these down the center of the lens oh dear oh dear we're just running from one problem to another surely if I'm able to focus the beam better as it appears as though I am here as opposed to there here as opposed to there surely I must be able to get a more powerful beam because I'm focusing it I'm amplifying it now more intensity would mean more damage no I'm getting a lot more damage when it's just leaking through the center of the lens when I amplify it here these are much shallower damage zones than these you can see that from the color but physically when I look at these and feel them these are much deeper than these and yet technically these should be much deeper because they're being amplified now I've added another set of data into the picture so that we can get a real comparison between two machines because these two here were done on the light blade machine with the glass tube set at roughly the same 30 watts as these and here's the reference diameter for the beam as opposed to the reference diameter here at the center of the RF machine and at the back corner of the RF machine so you can see we've got three different size beams that we're playing with now with this big beam there's no obvious depression in the middle very slightly dished this with the very sharp beam we've definitely got a very deep spike right in the middle of that burn here and here you can probably see that and similarly here even though we're at the back of the machine with a bigger beam we've still got a very intense spike right in the center of the burn because I've got a much bigger beam I can't push it as far off center and still hope to get everything onto the edge of the lens so I limited the amount of offset to three millimeters but it was still going to give me similar sort of data I wasn't expecting any change at all from here where it's on the center of the lens to here when it's offset to the center of the lens and 
to be honest, in looking at in terms of the amount of damage that's taking place in these burns at the center, these have each got a little spike in the center. Okay, even up here, you can probably see them. There's quite a big spike in the center there where the power is there. So it's really rather interesting that when I offset a big beam, I don't lose power. But when I offset a smaller beam, I do seem to lose the power in the center. I mean, to be honest, in this instance, it's not making very much difference to the intensity of the burn, which is exactly what I would have expected, theoretically, because we're not changing the power of the beam. We're only changing the way in which it passes through the lens. It would be absolutely rubbish at cutting because it would produce a very off angle cut. But for engraving onto a surface, it really doesn't make any difference. So when we turn these over, just out of interest, and we look at the penetration, this is the normal center beam, and this is the one that's offset. And look, we've got slightly less damage coming through this three millimeter thick material. We've got a little bit more damage coming through here. So there is a slight loss of power right at the center because we've offset the beam, but it's not hugely different. We've definitely got roughly the same range of damage that's happening. So the puzzle is why with the small beam have I got such a large difference in the damage that's occurring? 150 to 270. 150 to 230. Right, so this peak power at the center of the beam is just slightly above and below the focal point. But when we look at this one, it's about 90 to 150. And on this one, there's nothing there at all. This one, nothing there at all. And on this one, strangely enough, 180 downwards. That's a lot of information, a lot of conflicting information almost, that I've got to sit down and think about. Can I make any sense of it? I don't know. <laughs> You're seeing this at the same time that I'm seeing it. So I can leave you to go away maybe and think about it as well. It certainly seems very strange behavior for a lens. This difference here is virtually nil. This difference here is large and this difference here is large. And the only difference is this is a big beam and this is a small beam and a slightly larger beam. Well, I think I need another cup of coffee, so I'll catch up with you in the next session.